Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us. I'm John Swan of the Community Foundation, and we're thankful that those of you in the media and trustees and staff were able to join us for this important announcement this morning. I'd like to begin by introducing Alicia Dix, the President and CEO of the Community Foundation. Alicia. Good morning, and thank you, John. Um, thank you for this morning um, to uh, unveil our, our very special uh, day for us uh, and a very long uh, path ahead starts with the announcement we're about to make. We've had a 70 year history, just about 70 years of grant making and investing in our community. And indirectly, we've very often dealt with the issues around race and equity and justice, but never quite directly. And today, given the tenor of the nation, but more importantly, our community and the needs of our community, uh, we really want to stand and uh, stand this up as its own initiative. And we are so grateful and um, fortunate to have people in our community that really feel uh, passionate about change, passionate about finding the right solutions, and passionate about bringing a more vibrant community and that is our mission, to make sure that our vibrancy is for all. And um, thank you to the Ron and Sheila, Sheila Kakaro Family Fund, and Ron and Sheila are here with us today. Uh, they are once again paving a new path forward and uh, setting an example for others in our community with an initial gift of $50,000 towards um, a new fund that's the Racial and Justice Equity Fund for our community, which is just a start. Um, the Community Foundation is going to match that with $50,000 and really encourage our community to step up and join us in building this fund as, again, that first step through this, this new work that really needs to be articulated. Um, this commitment is going to hopefully start to address those issues that have been the underpinning of so many of our burdens in our community. Um, much of the work that the Community Foundation and many of our nonprofit partners already do are naturally overlapping with equity and justice. We're saying that's not enough. We will no longer allow it to be just an undercurrent. We need to call it out. We need to bring our community together. We need to listen to our community and take long-term strides and solutions together. And we will only do this as we work together. Uh, every sector of our community, every corner of our community, we can make changes that are long lasting and correct the hundreds of years of uh, injustice and inequity and turn that corner, but it will not be something short term. This is a long term commitment and we are ready for that commitment. We can't have a truly vibrant community for all, as I say if we do not make progress in these areas directly. Um, we need relevant work to give us long-term solutions. And again, our, our new fund with our new partners, uh, with our partners and with our um, community at large, will only start weaving those um, steps for those future investments. And many people are asking already, what will this fund invest? And people want to race to the solutions and say, um, it's a long list of things, you know, lifting barriers uh, that are there for opportunity and prosperity for people of color. And I'm sure some of those investments will be made. But first we need to listen and find the best path forward so that our investments are meaningful and uh, substantial and significant in long-term solutions. So with that, I, I'm really pleased uh, that we're here today with some of our partners and our trustees to kind of talk a little bit about this new fund and what we're looking to accomplish. John? Thanks, Alicia. Next, I'd like to call on Ron Kakaro, who is here also with Sheila, his wife, and, and we're so grateful to the Kakaros for their philanthropy in this regard and in many past examples as well. Ron, would you like to say a few words? Uh, yes, uh, thank you. Uh, good morning, uh, everybody. Um, 
I don't know if it was maybe 10 years ago that we decided to establish a, a fund uh, at the Community Foundation. And we picked the Community Foundation because we, we um, assumed that they would be good stewards, uh, not only helping the fund grow, but also helping us make the decisions about uh, where, uh, where we should go with our contributions. And it's been a very uh, successful uh, partnership We've been fortunate to be able to uh, add to the fund as the years have gone by and it's grown. And uh, uh, we're very fortunate to have had the Community Foundation at the forefront of it. It's made it easy, easy for us. When we set the fund up, it was set up for basic, basically basic human needs. That's always been the, the feeling, the thing that we wanted to do was help with basic things, food, shelter, et cetera. Uh, to us, that was the most important thing, poverty, et cetera. Um, and, and, you know, at the, the background of all that is, is inequality and poverty and uh, uh, racial uh, issues that create those problems. And, but we've never really addressed that uh, head on. With the events of the past few weeks, with the George, George uh, Floyd uh, killing, uh, it really uh, was very impactful on us. Um, and first reaction is, what could we do? Something's got to be done. And I contacted uh, Alicia um, and John, and I think it was Lindsay, or no, excuse me, Jan Quadrero, and asked about uh, the availability of a fund out there that we could contribute to that could do something. And there really wasn't anything that was available that we knew could be put towards uh, helping to address the recent problems of racial injustice and equality. And it was at that point that we decided, well, you know what, we could start, we could start one. And, um, and the idea would be, this would be uh, the seed money. And I know that we know that there's a lot of other organizations and individuals that want to do something right now. Uh, that, you know, I've heard that, you know, what, what can we do? And sometimes it's, you know, people can't really get hands on, but they can give some, they can give money and help solve problems. So it was that with that thought in mind that we, we decided to set up the fund and the idea that this would just only be the start of it. And the, the message now is to go out to people we know in the community to say, there is something you could do. You may, be, you may not be able to go out and protest right now, but you know, this is going to be a long-term problem. But if you want to, you want to think of a, a good place to invest some money to cure a lot of problems. Uh, and uh, this is certainly a, a good place to do it. So Sheila allowed me to do all the talking, which is very unusual. Uh, so thank you, Sheila. You're uh, welcome. Do you want to add anything, even though you told me to do all the talking? Um, I just want to say that, you know, it's something that's very close to our hearts. And uh, the issues that individuals of color face are just horrific. And um, something has to be done, it's plain and simple. Uh, it cannot continue to escalate as it has. Uh, everyone needs the same kind of justice and hopefully this fund and the people that contribute to it will help make that happen, uh, not just locally, but educating other people. So it's, it's, it's a good thing. Well Thank said. You, John. Thank you, Ron and Sheila. We really appreciate the support and leadership and example that you set for others. Next, Jawad Rashid, one of our partners for quite some time now, with Mohawk Valley Frontiers organization and Junior Frontiers and its Alumni Association. <laughs> Jawad, thank you for joining us and, and I, uh, I, the floor yeah. is yours now. Thank you, John, appreciate it. webinar with the Community um, Foundation right now. I, I would uh, just sure start by reiterating something that Alicia and Ron said, and that is two important uh, items. And that is number one, uh, it took a long time in uh, our country uh, for the systems, the various institutions that serve our country to be 
have the, the types of systemic racism that's pervasive that blocks and prevent people of color from uh, being treated equal and, and having equal opportunity. And they both said it's going to, this is going to take a long time. So I would reiterate that. It is, we are in it for the long run and that's not for a short fix or a quick band-aid, but to really examine the various institutions that serve our country and look at their, their history and their beginnings to dismantle those parts which prevent people of color from being full participants in each and every institution. And again, that takes a long time. So we, we have to understand that this is a long-term project that is immediate. If you can have the two in the same sentence, that's what we're faced with. And that's the other point that they both made is that this is a beginning. Um, we hope uh, that many people will join uh, Ron's and, and, and his, his beautiful wife in this, this very gracious uh, beginning of this fund and will contribute to this fund and let us all understand the importance of this fund. And if we do not find a way to find the racial harmony and equality in our country, all of the other problems will, will, will seem uh, small and mute. Um, we have to find a way to make everyone in this country be a full participant and enjoy the opportunities. And, you know, we also invite people to, to continue to try to be partners in the resolution of these issues. It cannot be done just by people of color. It cannot be done by just white folks or brown folks or black folks or red or yellow folks. It takes a nation to heal a nation. And our partnerships uh, throughout the Mohawk Valley in trying to examine, uh, analyze, and then eventually take apart the, the systemic racism that exists uh, in, in the majority of our institutions. It's going to take all of us to take serious hard looks at ourselves and hard looks at our institutions and be, have these open, honest conversations. Um, I was listening yesterday to a couple of conversations where they're saying that the one thing we have to do as Americans is look each other in the eye and say we're all American. We need to find a comfortable space to have uncomfortable conversations. And those conversations has to lead to actions that have to lead to change. And I believe we're as a community foundation is committed to that. So I thank all of you, especially uh, uh, Ron and his wife for this, this, this very good beginning. And I encourage our community uh, throughout the Mohawk Valley to join in this effort. And uh, let's look at our community and let's make it a place where everyone feels they have equal opportunity. Thanks, John. Jawad, thank you so much. And, and I would just point out that Jawad and Ron, although they are here speaking in different capacities today, are members of our board of trustees. And many of our board members are attending as well, along with some of our staff. So thank you. I would recognize all of you individually, but I might leave someone out. And also welcome to some of our guests from the community who are joining us today. With that, I would like to uh, conclude with Dave Manselman speaking on behalf of the entire Board of Trustees. Dave is the chair of our board. Dave? Uh, thank you, uh, John, and good morning, uh, everyone, and thank you for being on this call today. So, uh, as John said, I'm David Manselman. I'm board chair of the Trustee of the Community Foundation. And really, on behalf of the trustees, now is the time to move forward in a meaningful way to address these issues uh, and by establishing this fund is a positive step um, in moving forward to address racial justice and equity. While this fund is certainly important, your contributions to this fund is very important, but also just as important is to be able to have our community and community foundation expand to engage and listen to our community. Listening is very important um, in, 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 this, in this effort and initiative. Um, at the Community Foundation, our mission is to engage, invest, and lead. I'm going to say that again. Engage, invest, and lead. Um, engaging our community to make a difference, a meaningful uh, difference in uh, systematic ways uh, for investing. By investing in this particular fund, uh, investing in other organizations like Junior Frontiers, in making a difference. Leading. Leading in a co collaborative way. And, and moving together as one community is so important. So I'll say that again, I'm gonna say it for a third time, engage, invest, and lead uh, is so important uh, with this initiative going forward. 
and I appreciate everybody being on this call. And on behalf of the trustees, we thank you. And John, I'll turn it over to you. Thanks, Dave. Does anyone have any further remarks to make before we open it up for questions? Okay, we're good. With that then, I would just uh, read to you first two questions that were submitted in chat. And they are essentially uh, the same thing, uh, asked in a slightly different way. But uh, one, what plans does the Community Foundation have to incorporate black people committed to positive social change and racial justice? And what specifically will the money be used for what areas uh, will it be concentrated in? So, Alicia, would you like to handle those? Yeah, so again, uh, I think everybody's uh, nationally uh, on a race to find the, the right way to address these long, long, um, long standing issues. And we're really dedicated to a long process of listening to our community and making sure the investments we're making or need to make are uh, based in how we advance the work that we're gonna do in inequity. Um, so we're already involved with doing um, quite a bit in some of our most vulnerable neighborhoods and especially those where we have uh, people of color and refugee populations. But you know the traditional neighborhoods of Cornhill and West Utica that really need some attention. We have already really focused our, for example, our lead uh, childhood poisoning work. Um, we're looking at in putting uh, in an impact center with partners to uh, make sure the services and opportunities are available uh, at their door front so that uh, those neighborhoods have access uh, to the things that traditionally they have been, um, there are too many barriers for those services or training for workforce or education outlets, uh, mentoring, um, school programs. Uh, so many solutions that we've already been working with could, will be informed through this uh, as a thorough process, but also where are we falling short and other investments that need to be made, but really building collaboration and collective partnerships. We've been working with our neighborhoods for um, years. Uh, I've been five years, we've been having conversations around leadership through our partnership with MVCC and the Center for Leadership Excellence. We've been working with Junior Frontiers, we've been working with On Point and many other of our nonprofit partners to advance this work. Uh, opportunity with this fund and the growth of this fund and the commitment our board and our organization are making towards this end will only help hopefully accelerate that work and again, fill out other um, programs and initiatives that will help not find those solutions, but help the community in its healing process. Um, I know that listening is the first step because we don't have the answers. You know, we might think we do, but we need to listen to our residents and we have been, and much of what we've been doing thus far is in response to what we've learned through resident engagement, um, through data collection, uh, through outreach and focus groups, which now we will only intensify, intensify and really work harder to make sure that we're not having just a couple of opportunities for that uh, engagement. We need to have a sustained long-term engagement strategy so that we're hearing our, our neighbors, we're hearing our residents, and they're uh, applying what we're hearing to our work. Any additional questions from the media via chat, or you can uh, indicate using the tool, wave your hand or something of the kind, or just speak up. And if there are no further questions, I'd invite any of our participants to offer any closing remarks, anything that we haven't covered to this point. There's a lot to be said on this subject, so feel free to weigh in. Very well, I thank you all for your attendance and I thank our board for participating, especially Ron and Sheila and Jawad Rashid as well. And thank you, Alicia Dix for uh, leading the charge on this and for articulating what many people feel strongly about. Thank you all. <laughs>